I came back here where I started because I will shoot my final Netflix special tonight. That's right. And after this shit, it's time to make America wait again. <laughs> I've done too well. You know, if you black and show business and do too well, it's scary, nigga. Like, you got to get the fuck out of the casino while the getting's good, while you're still winning. If you don't walk away from the table, that's how niggas get Kevin Harted. <laughs> you already know. That's my man, I'm just saying, if he got a sex tape out, well, it's just a matter of time for me. <laughs> but you know why I be thinking sometimes I want to stop doing comedy? And, and you know, I don't want to sound like a braggart saying this, but the real, like, reason I want to stop is because I'm too goddamn good at it. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. I'm, it's not exciting. Every night before I come out on stage, I'll be backstage like, I'm sure this is gonna go well. <laughs> and it always does. <laughs> I'm so good at writing jokes, and this is not even an exaggeration. I actually write jokes backwards. <laughs> I will write a punchline with no particular setup in mind. I'll just put it on a scrap of paper, and I'll throw that scrap of paper in my uh, fishbowl. I have a fishbowl in my house filled with random punchlines. And every once in a while, I'll shake the bowl and I'll dig in there and just pull one out and see if I can make that shit work. <laughs> and I picked one for this special. It's not an easy punchline to pull off. Are you ready? Yeah. Here it goes. The punchline is, so I kicked her in the pussy. I haven't finished the joke yet. I just know whatever happens in the beginning of the joke, at the end of the joke, for some reason, I'm gonna kick somebody in the pussy. And it's going to be hilarious. And you know what's weird? I've always remembered a time when I wasn't. You know, when I was growing up, I was probably about eight years old, and at the time, we were living in Silver Spring. Yeah. Yes common misconception about me in D.C. A lot of people think I'm from the hood. That's not true. <laughs> but I never bothered to correct anybody <laughs> because I wanted the streets to embrace me. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I, I kept it up as a ruse. Like, sometimes I'll hang out with rappers like Nas and them, and these motherfuckers will start talking about the projects. Yo, it was wild in the PJs, yo. And I'll be like, word, nigga, word. But I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> My parents did just well enough so that I could grow up poor around white people. And to be honest, when Nas and them talk about the projects, nigga, I used to get jealous. Because it, it sounded fun. Everybody in the projects was poor. And that's fair. But if you were poor in Silver Spring, nigga, it felt like it was only happening to you. <laughs> I know the pain of that first sleepover at a white friend's house. <laughs> And you come back home on Sunday and just look at your parents like, y'all need to step your game up. <laughs> Everything at Timmy's house works. <laughs> Remember the first time you saw that? In a cold winter, and you'd be at a white friend's house and see the motherfuckers in their living room without their coats on? Timmy was one of my first white friends, like, in my life, man. He was a good dude, too. He moved to Silver Spring from Utah, of all places. I guess his family was affiliated with that Mormon church they got down there. And me and him used to hang out. And one day, I was at his house. We were just hanging out. And, and Timmy says, Dave, why don't you stay for dinner tonight? 
I said, oh, man, I'd love to, but I can't. If I'm not home before dark, my mother will kill me. That was a lie. <laughs> my mother had several jobs. I hadn't seen her in like three or four days. <laughs> At that point in my life, it was my experience that white dinner wasn't delicious. <laughs> I'd rather go home and fry some bologna or some shit like that. But then old Timmy threw me a curveball I wasn't expecting. He said, oh, it's too bad you can't stay, Dave, because um, mom uh, made stovetop stuffing. <laughs> I said, what the fuck, stovetop? <laughs> well, hold on, nigga, let me make some phone calls real quick. <laughs> I had seen that commercial so many times, I had dreamt of getting my hands on some of that stovetop stuffing. And finally, I met a motherfucker that actually had a box of stovetop in the house. I couldn't miss this opportunity, so I pretended to call my mother. And then I came back and I said, Timmy, Timmy, you're not gonna believe this great news. Mom said I can stay. And he said, fantastic. He said, why don't you come with me and we'll help set the table and then we can say the blessing. I had no interest in setting this motherfucker's table or saying these crazy ass Mormon prayers. I just wanted that goddamn stuffing. <laughs> my hands first. My plan was simple. Wash my hands slowly, and by the time I'm done, the table will be set, the blessing will be said, and all that there will be left to do is eat. <laughs> Went to the bathroom. I washed my hands very slowly. I must have been in there for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and suddenly, one of his mothers came to the door. She was like, hi, David, right? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, Timmy tells me that you're planning on staying for dinner. I said, I hope that's not a problem, ma'am. She says, no, it's no problem. In fact, we'd love to have you. It's just that we weren't expecting company. And I'm afraid there's not enough stovetop stuffing <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> so I kicked her in the pussy. Bam! Ladies and gentlemen, I told you I'm dope, nigga. I told you what I was gonna say and you still didn't see it coming. And that's why I make the big bucks. <laughs> oh my God. But there's a more important reason that I would stop doing comedy right now. And this reason is the real reason that's been percolating, and, and it really is the crowd, not you. I'm talking about the crowd on the big stage. It's too hard to entertain a country whose ears are so brittle. Motherfuckers are so sensitive, the whole country has turned into bitch-ass niggas. <laughs> Everything you say upsets somebody. You know, I can remember when it all started. It was when I was doing Chappelle's show. When I was doing Chappelle's show, I used to do the show, and then on the weekends, I'd do, like, concerts and shit like that. So I'm doing a concert, and there was a couple in the front row, beautiful couple. The wife, wife was obviously Asian. You could see it in her face. The husband, this motherfucker was mysterious, to say the least. <laughs> Couldn't quite pinpoint where he was from. Caramel-colored fella, very nice hair, but he could have been from anywhere, Bangladesh, Mexico. I can't guess with a nigga like this. <laughs> All I knew for sure about this guy is that his wife was a bitch. <laughs> I could see that in her face, too. No, he was laughing and having a good time, and she was scowling at me at a goddamn comedy show. I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized at some point that she was pregnant. 
And I was smoking on stage. I said, oh my God, that's probably why she's mad. So I started to put my cigarette out, but then she hit me with one of them fake non-smoker calls. <coughs> so I just kept smoking. I thought to myself, bitch, that babe will be fine, relax. And I tried to break the tension. I just asked her. That's all I said. I go, hey, where are you guys from anyway? And I could tell that she was on to me. She goes, very condescendingly, she says, I'm from California. If you are asking my ethnicity, I am Chinese. He was like, I'm Mexican, bro. I said, well, I'm sorry if I offended you by asking, but you're a very beautiful couple. And miss, there's no question that you're gonna give birth to the hardest working baby this world has ever seen. <laughs> That's not a bad joke. She got very upset. She got up to leave immediately, but she didn't just leave. She had to take one last dig at me on the way out. I will never buy one of your fucking DVDs again, Dave Chappelle. I said, ma'am, with all due respect, Chinese people don't buy DVDs. <laughs> and the crowd went crazy. We have all laughing, having a good time. I didn't even think anything of it. And then just three days later, this lady sends a fucking letter to my promoter telling him not to book me for shows anymore because I was, quote, racist, huh? And, and I'm quoting her, insensitive to the nature of my interracial marriage. I was like, oh, word, bitch, I was. <laughs> if she, she would know that I myself am in an interracial marriage. That's right. In fact, my wife is Asian too. Surprise, bitch, I'll see you on Thanksgiving. <laughs> But my wife's not Chinese. She's Filipino. That's right, that's right. And our kids are Puerto Rican somehow, so there you go. <laughs> but I don't give a fuck about interracial marriage. In fact, you know what? My mother is half white. A lot of people don't know that. Well, all right, you were a little too excited, but okay. <laughs> a lot of people don't believe me when I say that, but it's true. You can't tell looking at me but if I grew my hair out, <laughs> you would think you was at a fucking Cat Williams concert. My shit is, my shit is beautiful. <laughs>